Um, my name's Nigel Healy. I'm, I'm what uh, we call in the university system the dean, which is sort of like being the principal of the college. Um, and, you know, it's my responsibility to really ensure that uh, each and every one of you gets the best education and the best three years or four years uh, while you're here. And what I'm going to do by way of a kind of uh, uh, short introduction is to try to tell you something about how the college fits into the university and how you, the degrees that we study here uh, actually work. Um, but first, just to congratulate you on joining our family. Um, the Faculty of Commerce that offers the BCom degree uh, goes back to 1906. Um, so we celebrated five years ago our, our hundred years, our centennial, and this photograph is, is taken from that centennial uh, celebrations. Uh, it's obviously John Key. Uh, he's a graduate of this college uh, some years ago, and he came to speak on the occasion of the hundredth anniversary and. Uh, actually wearing his commerce tie. He did admit to me that he wasn't a very good student, but uh, it clearly didn't seem to do him any harm in the long run. Um, so I'm going to just say briefly how these things all fit together. The university as a whole, with about 20,000 students, I suppose, overall, in terms of headcount, um, and the university is organised into five main colleges. So you can see over here on the, on the left, we've got a College of Business and Economics, that brings together the departments of accounting and finance, management, economics and finance, sorry, accounting and information systems, um, down here, economics and finance and management. Then we've got a college of arts, which is, which is really arts and social science and humanities, uh, engineering and science. And then we've got separately the school of law, uh, which stands on its own. And those colleges are supported by a whole range of central services, uh, like the library, the Learning Skills Centre and so on, on this side, and their function is really to help you do as well as you can uh, while you're studying with us. Now each of the colleges, which house the different departments, uh, we're each responsible for uh, one or more degrees. So our College of Business and Economics is responsible for the Bachelor of Commerce, um, and that's the three-year program that you're now joining. Um, and for students that want to stay on and study further, you can stay on for the honours year, which is the fourth year. And then you have a choice. You can either do a one-year thesis and do a Master of Commerce, or you can enter the PhD program, which is at the university level. Uh, and we have two other master's programs, the MBA and the Master of Business Management, which are essentially for students uh, in, in management development. Okay, so how does this, how does the BCom work? Well, first of all, there are two main features to it. One is that we require all BCom students to have a sort of thorough grounding in the different discipline areas uh, within commerce. Uh, and so we have what's called the core, where we require that you take papers in, and you can see here, they're kind of five broad areas. We require that you take papers in accounting and finance, in information systems, in economics, and there you have a choice. You can do either micro or macro, but we want you to experience something of the discipline of economics. And of course, if you want to major in economics, you'll take both of those. Uh, in, in the kind of principles or fundamentals of management, and then we want one paper in some quantitative methods. So we've got two offerings there, and we'll introduce you to those. You have a choice uh, of, uh, of paper there, but both of them provide you with that core knowledge. Uh, in most cases, um, students will take most, most or all of these papers in your first year. For some of our flavours of degree, um, it's more convenient to take one or two of these in the second year. So I'll show you how that works in a second. So that's the first thing. There's a core in the Commerce program that you all must take. The second is you have to choose at what, uh, and you don't have to make that choice in a sense immediately, but you need to start thinking about this pretty soon. You need to decide what you want to specialise in. Because in order to get a Commerce degree, you have to have done a, a, a proportion of your papers in a single area where you're specialising. 
And so we call those majors. Uh, you've probably heard that term uh, many times before. So we offer within our program a total of 11 different majors or specializations. Uh, and you can see there, they're grouped by department. So the accounting uh, and information systems, ACES we call that, um, has three majors. Uh, economics and finance offer majors in both economics and finance. And management offers majors. You can see there, marketing, strategy and entrepreneurship, human resource management, that's people management, uh, mainstream management, and management science and operations management. And we also have one major which is cross-departmental, which is international business, where you can take papers in management, uh, in economics, and in... Um, where's the zipper gone? Never mind. Now, so that's the basic structure of the degree. You're going to have to take the core papers so that you've got a solid grounding in commerce, and then you're going to specialise in one or more areas of, of commerce. So I won't make it any more complicated than that at this stage, but you need to kind of get your head round of this. Now, the other thing that we need to uh, just have you focused on up front is that um, we also have rules about uh, your academic progress. So in order that you can uh, succeed in the university, um, you need to basically not fail papers. You have to meet these requirements. So you can see if I look at those two rules, you can get caught by either of these two rules, and so you've got to be aware of both of them. The first rule, number one, is that you can only take a course that you fail one more time. Okay. So if you take, let's say, a statistics paper, if you fail it, you can only take it one, on one more occasion. You can apply for special permission to take it a second, to retake it a second time, but that's only under certain circumstances, under fairly exceptional circumstances. Now, you need to, you need to think about this very carefully because in order to get a BCom, you must pass those core papers. So, so if you get caught by this, uh, you know, I've failed twice and I can't come back, you won't be able to complete the BCom. So it's very important that you're disciplined and focused and, and, you, and you really work hard at those core papers. The, the second rule, we have a thing called a grade point average. So it, the grade point average, it tells you how it's calculated there, but it's essentially your average mark. So you get nine points for an A+, and you get minus one for an E, which is a fail. And we just work out what your average mark is. Now, if your average mark drops below one and a half, that's to say, if your average grade is between a C and a C minus, um, and you, you repeat that performance for two semesters, um, we will ask you to go. Okay. So as you go into this, you're going to have a you're going to have a great time here. Really enjoy yourselves. But I need you to know up front that um, we have pretty strict rules here about academic progression. So you need to be focused from really from kind of day one and not get caught by either of these two, uh, either of the two progression rules. So how do you not get caught? How do you succeed? It's pretty easy. Just stay disciplined and focused. Think hard about the courses you're choosing. Plan your degree. Choose courses that you've investigated and you think that you will enjoy. Okay, and then once you've started that, just stay disciplined. Go to the lectures, go to all the tutorials, complete the assignments on time, and don't fall behind. Okay, and you know, if you just follow those simple rules, you'll succeed. We want you to succeed. We've got all the resources to help you succeed. But you just have to stay with the program. If you start missing class and falling behind, it gets really tough to catch up. If, in the worst possible world, you find that you've enrolled in a course which is either a core paper that you think you're not really ready for, or it's, it's, a, it's a paper that you chose, but you realize to your horror that you made the wrong choice, then withdraw. You have to formally withdraw from the course at the university, and the deadline is the April 30th. If you withdraw from the course, that doesn't count as a failure. It's just wiped from your record and then you can re-enroll in something else next. But, but don't, whatever you do, and we've, we've had a number of students uh, last year fall foul of this, if you, if you find yourself getting behind in a course or you've made the wrong choice, and you just think, oh, well, I've spent the money now, so stuff it, 
that's the wrong choice to make because uh, what that'll mean is it will appear automatically on the transcript as if you'd failed, even though in reality you didn't attempt it. Okay, so this is really the, the last bit for me. Um, you know, what we're really about here is making an academic contract. Um, I'm pledging to you on behalf of all my colleagues uh, within the college and across the, the departments and our support services that we will do everything in our power to help you succeed. Um, we want you to go... I, I mean, my, my, uh, one of the best days for me each year is graduation day when I get to read out and probably mispronounce a whole number of names of students who are graduating. And it's a fabulous feeling to see people walk across the stage, graduating with their degrees, going on to the next stage of their lives, you know, and their parents, family, final there to celebrate their success. It's fantastic. That's what we're all here for. Okay? The flip side is that you know, for you to succeed, um, you have to put the effort in. And there are a couple of, uh, a couple of parts to this. One is, from this day on, you are a member of the University of Canterbury, and what you do is, is really how we will be judged. And you'll find yourself suddenly kind of think, you know, feeling slightly different when you listen to the news and you hear about students. Suddenly you think, oh, I guess you know, I'm a university student. Okay, so your behaviour outside the city and so on reflects on us as a university. Um, secondly, we are here to make you succeed or help you succeed, but we can't actually do it, our, do it ourselves. You have to do it. You've all got the brains to achieve this. You've proved that already. Um, what we need you to do then is to work hard and actually justify the investment that we're making and your parents and your families are making in you as undergraduates. So have an have a absolutely brilliant time. Take a look around. The people sitting around you will probably be your lifelong friends. So if you're sitting next to somebody that you don't like, that's a problem. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> And, and really enjoy yourselves. Um, I mean it this very sincerely that, you know, I would trade with you in an instant. You know, you're just about to embark on a fantastic journey. Uh, the transition really between high school and the rest of your lives when you become working adults. So take all the advantages of everything we've got to offer you here and, uh, and you know, and go out better people. All right, thank you so much. And I will now pass on to our Associate Dean, Dr. Sonia Maisie. Hello everyone, uh, just to reiterate everything that Nigel's already said really, um, it's great to see you all here, some of you I've already met, some of you I may have met um, when we came out to colleges and schools earlier, so it's really good now to see everyone actually here on campus. Um, I don't want to take up very much time at all. Um, as Nigel said, I'm the Associate Dean of the Faculty and also the Academic Manager for the College. Uh, what that means in practice is that I have a general oversight or involvement in the teaching and learning that goes on in the College. And it also means that um, I will be playing a key role in monitoring your academic progress. Um, as Nigel said, we do monitor students' academic progress twice a year at the end of each semester. Um, so I no doubt will be seeing some of you in that context. Um, unfortunately, part of my job is that when students come to see me, it's often because things are not going perhaps not quite as well as they should be doing. Um, but however, that doesn't mean to say I don't want to see you because I very much want people students to feel that they can come into the college when they've got a problem. We're not there to judge students, um, whether it's their personal lives or what they're doing. What we're there to do is to help them succeed. Um, and then sometimes there are lots of things we can do if we know that you've got a problem to help you um, through that period. Because, you know, things don't always go well in life and it's very difficult just to separate out your academic um, life from your personal life. So it's really a plea for you to make use of the resources that you've paid for, um, whether it's by accessing your tutors and academic um, support that's available within the college and also at the Learning Skills Centre, or coming in and talking to either me or one of the student advisors. And I just want to say a couple of words about the advisors who are here in a moment and will stand up and introduce themselves to you. Um, we have in the college two student advisors and they're available every day, Monday to Friday, 
um, by appointment or also drop-in sessions. You don't need to make an appointment weeks in advance. Um, so they're there to see you. And they do a number of things. I'll just... Uh, they can give you course advice. Um, actually, we do have 11 majors, and you need to meet the requirements. You need to make sure that you're taking the correct courses, that you're taking them in the right order. Um, you might want to do a double degree or a double major. That's quite a complicated planning exercise, and that's what the student advisors are there to help you do. They'll also be able to advise you about whether or not certain combinations of courses work well or whether they're heavy workload. So I really encourage you to come in early on and talk to a student advisor. You might at this stage not really have much idea what you want to do, but during the coming weeks and months, come in, make an appointment and actually talk to them. They are a mine of information. They can also advise you, some of you may be coming from other institutions where you've completed um, courses or awards, you may be able to transfer some of that credit to your BCom degree. And again, the student advisors will be able to advise you on that. They can also advise you as to whether or not any courses you've done will entitle you to be exempt from taking certain courses. Um, so exemption from prerequisites. And also, you will need to come and talk to them for any other applications that might require the dean or my approval. Um, for example, you might um, be taking a course and then um, you know, something might go wrong. You might get knocked off your bicycle or um, you might have some personal problems. That means that you're unable to study effectively for some period, but you've missed that magic date by which to withdraw from the course. Well, there is a provision for that, um, for withdrawing late from a course to make sure that it doesn't sit there as a fail mark on your transcript. But unfortunately, these are really bureaucratic procedures, but it's really important that you follow them. So again, you don't need to stress too much about it, but what you do need to do is come in and see a student advisor or me or Nigel um, to make sure that you do go through that formal procedure. So I think here we are without further ado. Student advisors, would you like to stand up and wave so that students here can at least put a face to a name? So this is Marion and welcome. So I don't know if you want to say anything. Jenny, anything you want to say? Okay. Um, <coughs> oh, thank you. Um, if you've enrolled for all your courses this year and you're happy with your enrolment choice, then we may not see you till later in the year. But if you think you might want to change a course at the start of semester two, come and talk about that with us during semester one. Uh, if you think you might want to change your major, you know, if you suddenly discover there's another subject area and you'd really like to do that instead, then come and talk to us about that. Um, as Sonia was saying, it pays to plan in advance. The 200 level and 300 level courses all have prescribed prerequisites, so it pays to plan ahead. You need to take the courses this year that will line you up for the courses you want to take next year. So if you have some second thoughts about what you might want to do next year, come and talk to us about that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks very much. And this is where we are. Now, I've been assured by Averly that this will walk across. Well, how do I get the footprints to walk? There you are. So you just come into the Commerce Building and up to the second floor. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> do you have to keep pressing it? <laughs> Um, and now I'm going to hand over to Averly, who's our marketing coordinator, who's going to walk you through the college website and so, to, so that you have an idea of some of the resources that are available online on the college website, um, and in particular to help you plan your degree. Thanks. Well, as Sonia said, my name's Averly, Averly Burgess. I'm the marketing and communications coordinator for the college. I'm originally from Dunedin. Do we have anyone from Otago here today? Just want to say a special hello, no one. <laughs> right, just right on with it then. I've been in Christchurch for about 10 years now, so it's not too bad a place either. <laughs> I just wanted to show you, uh, you've been sort of orientating yourself with your physical home. We wanted to show you your virtual home on the web. Um, and to help you remember after the toga party tonight, uh, we are giving you these, you might lose them, uh, USBs. So make sure you grab one. Uh, 
pen drives when you leave today. They have our, if you forget everything else we've shown you here today, uh, they have our U URL on the back in the very fine print. So I just thought I'd show you how to get there. There are a couple of ways. Now you can always use this navigation at the top here, departments, and we are the College of Business and Economics, it's that easy. Now on this page, you can link to everything that you'll probably need in your first few weeks, and then you'll probably find you'll find lots of other exciting places <laughs> to uh, live on on the web. First off, I just want to show you down the bottom here we have the departmental links. So we've got accounting and information systems. We have economics and finance. They look fairly similar. Quite different places though. And management. So in each of, of those uh, websites, you'll find contact details for all your lecturers and the respective courses. Also, just wanted to highlight a couple of things that have been talked about in terms of degree planning, some resources that are available to you. We have this quick link over here at the moment uh, to degree plans. And I'll just show you another way to find it as well through course advice, because this is probably a place that you might like to come. Once again, you'll see we've got our course advisors there, student advisors, and the times that are available. And up here in this menu, we have a variety of things to help you with your degree plans. So you've got a PDF download if you'd like to print it out. Or you can go, we went to accounting, I'll go to economics today. So this uh, links to all the courses. So one thing we suggest you do is that you take a look at these plans and uh, make sure you can tick off all the courses. Because if you're missing something from, from one of these plans, make sure you can explain it. It's fine if you've deferred something to your second year or you, you have a waiver because you done exceptionally well in scholarship exam and so you're into your second year courses, that's fine. If you don't have an explanation other than you just didn't want to do it, I suggest uh, that you, you do go and enrol in these courses, make sure you have them, so that you can meet your prerequisites for second and third year, because otherwise you might find you get to second year, you get to third year and whoops, you missed a maths course that you needed. Okay? You'll find these all link to the course occurrences. So that shows you that there's a a course of Econ 105 in both semesters. Just use the back key to get back. And one other thing just to show you in that course advice section is um, course and exam regulations. So there's some information in there about things like aggregates and academic project progression, missed exams, all that sort of thing. Some important information that you might not otherwise stumble across and might not always need. Um, it's good to know where to find it when you actually need it. So it's on our college website under course advice. And, and that's everything from me. I'm going to hand you back now and going to hear from each of our departments. And first is County and Information Systems, Associate Professor. Right, we've got lots of, lots of different subjects included in our department. Um, read them quickly. Right, a lot of people who come and do accounting are aiming on becoming a member of the accounting profession. And so they want to become a member of the New Zealand Institute of Chartered Accountants or another professional body. Um, if you want to become a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, you have to actually do four years at university. So what we suggest is that you aim high and think of your fourth year as being the BCom Honours year. So when you're planning, think about doing BCom Honours and plan backwards from there what courses you would need to do. All of you will end up doing some courses in our department because you have two, two of the courses in the core uh, taught by staff in our department. So um, accounting and financial information and information systems and technology. If you are thinking of majoring in accounting, in other words you want to become an accountant um, or take that as your main subject, it will pay you to do the core subject of 102 in the first semester so you can do 103 in the second semester. So just plan ahead there. These are the majors that are offered in our department. 
so accounting, if you find that you especially like tax as you're going through, you might decide to make it a major in taxation and accounting. You have to do some tax anyway. Um, or you might go along in the line of information systems. So these are some other subjects you might want to do at stage one level if you are planning on doing any of those three majors. If you're going to major in accounting or taxation in accounting, then you need to, as I said, do 103. So do 102 in the first semester, 103 in the second semester. And you also might want to pick up 152, um, law and business, in your first year as well so that you keep your options open um, for doing a major in tax especially. Um, if you're thinking of majoring in information systems, then you'll want to do Info 125 in your first year as well uh, as the core subjects. And these are just pretty pictures of some of the lecturers you'll see in those courses. Who am I handing over to? Uh, kia ora tato. I'm uh, Steve Hickson from the Department of Economics and Finance. Uh, one thing that actually occurred to me before, before I just talk about that, something that um, Professor Healy said was about withdrawing from courses. Under NCEA, if you don't turn up to your exam at the end of the year in a particular subject, or if you leave a particular paper in a standard blank and you don't write on it at all, it simply gets wiped from your NCEA transcript. True? Well, uh, that isn't what happens here. Uh, so that withdrawal rule at NCEA, where you can withdraw by default, just simply not by writing on your exam, is not applicable at university, okay? So that's uh, something that students do get a little bit trapped about. Anyway, uh, yeah, pretty pictures? Hmm, never mind, I don't know how they get these things. Yeah, yeah, same shoes? <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> I should have worn my other shirt today, really, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get enough stick about my clothing from my daughter. Um, economics, <clears throat> there are two first year papers, micro and macro. Uh, both are offered in uh, each semester. It doesn't uh, matter too much in the sense which off order you take them if one fits better in your timetable or other. But we do recommend that you take 104 in semester one and 105 in semester two if you're going to take both. A couple of reasons for that. One is generally fits better to do micro first then macro, get that understanding of markets and prices and that sort of thing before you move on to uh, macro. Uh, and secondly, 104 in the first semester has three streams and it's video recorded. So three streams actually means that you can go to any class on any day. Now the university system will allocate you to a stream. It'll say you've got to go to 10 o'clock. You just ignore that. Okay? You can go 10 o'clock on Monday, 1 o'clock on Tuesday, 4 o'clock and 4 o'clock on Thursday. All the three classes on any given day are all identical. And we know that students get all stressed about that because it generates a timetable clash and I have people coming and see me and say, I've been put into the four o'clock class, I've got kids to pick up from school or I've got a job or whatever. Okay, so the advantage of three streams is that you can um, mix and match your streams uh, uh, over the week. Okay, and in 105 semester two, there are two streams and it's recorded. Whereas the other way around, there's only one stream and they're not recorded. So we recommend 104 first. Finance papers start at 200 level. That's where you really get into those. In your first year, our recommended course of study, if you're going to do a major in economics or finance, would be 104, 105, micro, macro, the stats paper, a maths paper, right? You're really gonna have to bite off a little bit of maths. The accounting 102 paper, Info 123, Management 100, so they're the core papers in the BCom. Uh, if in fact you've got a bit of trouble fitting all of those in because we do want you to do the math paper and so on, this, there's ways to kind of wriggle some of those into your second year, as um, Sonia said. But if you're in doubt, come and see me. Uh, that's what I'm here for, to make sure that you get into the right place for your degree. Oh, and they're not pretty pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Who is next? I just should say, yeah, that's me in the middle. Steve Agnew, he teaches micro 104, I teach 105, purely coincidental, we've got the same name, we did that for ease so that you actually don't have to remember two names. And Deb Reed is finance, she's not called Stephen, and really she comes into play more in the second year when you might be thinking about doing some finance papers, but there she is, and you'll see her in accounting 102 anyway.
Okay, um, I'm Paul Ballantyne now. I'm currently the acting HOD for management. Um, about three minutes ago, I became completely phobic about what shirt am I wearing today. Um, I'd like to point out that it's a dark blue up there, and today is a black. So there is a, there is a bit of difference in terms of what's going on. Now... Our department's probably a little different in that essentially about half the majors that are offered as part of the BCom are housed within um, the, the management department. There's five main ones which are there, so human resource management, um, management itself, um, management science and operations research, um, marketing and strategy and entrepreneurship. And as Nigel said at the outset today, um, we're also one of the homes for the international business major as well. So there is quite a, a broad range of topics that we actually order, that we have offered in the department. Um, to introduce some of the superstars in the department that you will be encountering in the first year, um, well, Sana is over there, so I'll say superstar. Um, management 100, so the fundamentals of management paper, um, co-taught by um, Dr. Herb de Vries, as well as Sana, who's over there. Won't get her to stand up and say hello, but so you'll see a lot of them if you're taking that paper, and of course it is going to be part of the core. Um, this is an interesting paper because I know one of the, the, the subjects that tends to cause the most apprehension for people is anything involving statistics. Okay? Um, it's one of those weird ones for me. I can remember when I started my university career about 20 years ago, um, I basically did everything I could to avoid stats. Um, here I am 20 years later, and the main area I teach is marketing research. So it's, it's one of those ones don't have a nervousness about it, but what we do have um, is two subjects that are offered by management science. Um, one is management science itself. The second one is quantitative methods for business, which is MSI 110. Now, there's two papers on offer in terms of doing the, the statistics part of the core. Um, this is one of them. Probably really good for those of you that might have some nervousness or some apprehension about statistics. Um, the, the, the situations, the examples, and everything that's talked about in that course has a real distinct business flavour to it. Um, so if there is a bit of nervousness about what to do, um, it, is a, it is a great paper to do. Some features about the MSI 110 paper. Um, it's a modular structure, so the course is sort of really broken up into quite a few distinctive blocks. As part of that, um, what you're able to do is work at your own pace. Now, in addition to that, what we also have in this paper is it's either a pass or a fail grade. So unlike before when Nigel was talking about subjects being an A- minus through to an E, for MSI 110, just a straight pass or fail. So it's really sort of ensuring that you've got competence in each of the areas that are covered. Ideal if you're anxious, as I say. Um, and also, if you don't complete, you can enrol again and carry on in the next semester. So if you don't quite get there in one semester, um, you can finish the paper off in the first two weeks of the other one. So it does have that as a feature as well. No final exam, um, but there are weekly tests. And as I say, so the modular structure, work at your own pace and sort of go as you can. Some people do it very quickly, some people takes a bit more time. A subject that's not in the core is um, Marketing 100, so the Principles of Marketing paper. Um, if you're going to do that one, um, great paper to be involved with. Um, Dr. Susie Morrish and Dr. Akant Veer, um, the two people that take that paper. Um, like a lot of the core courses, again, offered in both semesters. Right, what is it that management offers you? Well, we offer a great range of courses across different subject areas, and as I say, we do offer a lot of majors within our department. International lecturers um, in the marketing group, of which there's nine staff, I'm the only New Zealander, which everybody likes to point out time and time again. Um, we've got an internship program at the third year, which has been great for a lot of people. Um, our better students, um, sort of it's a competitive application process um, towards the end of the second year, sort of in your third year, go out there with a real world company and get some experience and complete a project with them as part of your degree. Um, we have a huge, a huge array of practical assignments in our subjects as well, um, especially at the 300 level. So sort of as opposed to the assessment being, let's say, sort of mainly tests or essays or something like that, um, sort of very much sort of hands-on projects with real world companies and so on. International exchange opportunities if you're doing the international business program, and um, it's got their good career prospects, but I'll say great career prospects, okay, just to make it even better. Um, the final thing in terms of what to remember is each of the majors we offer as part of the department often has a slightly different set of prerequisites um, that you'll need to be aware of in the first year. 
the course advice information is available online. I'd basically really suggest that you do familiarise yourself with that. So if you have an idea about what it is you might want to be doing in the second year, start thinking now about what sort of order or what exact subjects you might want to do in that first year. Um, the department's there to help, the course advisors are there to help, and of course there's the information online too in terms of planning what it is that you want to do. As HOD, one thing I see a lot of the time is people trying to get into the second year with perhaps not the right combination of subjects. So if you start thinking about this sort of thing now, it avoids problems a year from now. Okay. Um, so as I say, check your degree plan and plan ahead. Um, advice that, yeah, I just really, really suggest that is done. I think that's it from me. Oh, we've got the footprints again. <laughs> Great, thanks. And now, to wrap up, uh, we're just going to hear from an organisation that uh, you might want to have a lot to do with, uh, UCOM. We're just recording it. I bet you guys are all bored out of your skin. No, it's just joking. The Commerce Department, are, they, they're very nice people and they do look after you, So, and they've got some great advice, so... I hope you've enjoyed the last hour speaking to them. But we're going to shed some uh, something a bit brighter, um, some information for you. We're UCOM, which is the University Commerce Soci uh, Society. Um, my name's Andrew Slater. I'm the president this year. And this is Madeline. She's the vice president. I'll just give you a bit of an overview of what UCOM is. Um, we are attached to the, to the commerce school. Um, we have a commerce focus academically, um, but we do... Um, we do have members like throughout all faculties on the, at the university. Uh, we're UC's second biggest society. Uh, last year we had 1,700 members, um, so we're pretty big. Um, and we basically have um, an academic perspective, a social uh, perspective, and also sporting. Um, we're heaps of fun, so basically what we'll do, we'll, we're going to sort your, your social life out for the year. Um, we run a, two barbecues out in the island fields. Uh, we run a cocktail party, uh, which has been voted for the last uh, three years as the best event outside of, uh, of UC. Uh, we have a summer gala, which is coming up. Uh, we run a night pub crawl in town. Uh, we run sporting. Uh, you can come and play for UCOM um, during the sports day. And also uh, we have in the pipeline a, a horse racing event. So um, just in terms of what you get um, at the event, once you sign up to be a member, uh, like our cocktail party um, last year was a, was a mystery location and we bust uh, 350 people to the venue. Um, you had live entertainment for the night, unlimited alcohol and, um, and food to keep you all sober. So um, we are good fun and it, it heaps of fun being on, on the executive. Mads, is, uh, Mads and I have been on for the last three years now, so um, that's saying something. We, uh, we do enjoy it. Um, Outside of the social scene, uh, we do have an academic focus and we, and we run toots for you guys uh, leading into semester one and semester two exams. Um, and so they're free for our members and they are really helpful. And um, we get quality uh, post-grad post students to, to run those toots, so they've done all the papers. Um, so they, they're really useful. Uh, we're also this year running an investment seminar, um, so that would be um, an interesting seminar to come along to. And we help out with the, uh, the graduate um, process once you, uh, once you leave university. Um, just our, our sponsors and who we're sponsored by, we, we have uh, DB Brews um, with us this year again. And they supply us with our Export 33 and Export Gold. Um, we have uh, Johnny Arrow Cider and uh, Rocker F uh, Fuse. And Two Degrees are on board this year. And uh, we're doing a, a special members deal with uh, signing up to two degrees with their SIM cards. Uh, obviously the college, a major sponsor of ours, and uh, we're very grateful for them. Uh, we also have House Pizza, and they do discounts for you once you're a member. Uh, we have Deloitte, which are our graduate firm, and um, you'll see them in or around campus, and, and you'll get to know them pretty well. Yellow Cross in town at Seoul Square, but if you're outside of Christchurch, you will spend a lot of time at Yellow Cross. So uh, there'll be cheap uh, drinks deals at that bar. 
Um, I'm now going to hand on to Maz, and she's going to talk about just signing up to and uh, up to UCOM and and uh, how much it costs, etc. So we've started signing up today. Just out, you guys may have um, some of you may have come and seen us outside the Commerce Building. Um, we've got this year. We're running two different. We're selling, sorry, two different memberships: a standard and a deluxe membership. So standard's twenty-eight dollars, and you get one of our T-shirts, which um, with our logo, and it's got our um, sponsors logos on the back, and you get like a goodie bag with a Powerade and stuff. And that membership will basically get you subsidised, really heavily subsidised tickets to all our events, like um, the ball and the cocktail party, which, if you're not a member, are quite expensive to go to. Um, and we've run, we have two barbecues, all, all our events, you know, members get in free to the two barbecues. Um, and then our deluxe membership's 45, and it's, that includes um, a two degrees, a free two degrees SIM card loaded with $20. And if you activate it, you get another free $20 credit, is that right? Yeah. So definitely it's probably that time of year, especially starting down at uni, maybe upping the techs a bit. So they do, they run a really good student SIM card deal. Um, and we've got cash or FPOS. And just so you know, like our, we attract members from all faculties, definitely not limited to commerce, because it is in your best social interest to join. So <laughs> it's just not all commerce students. But um, obviously just an added bonus if you are and you get our like tutorials and all that kind of stuff. Is it all? Um, if you don't know the, the Canterbury setup and how it works, um, Next Tuesday there will be Clubs Day, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and there are over 105 clubs this year, and they'll be selling out on the Esbrock lawn. Um, we're the second biggest club out there, so there are a lot of smaller clubs, but you guys are almost obliged to, to sign up because you are first years of the Commerce School. So, um, And we, do, we sort your life out socially for the year. And you do get a lot out of it, so um, it's in your best interest because the books can uh, become a bit draining at times and you need to, to cut loose and have a bit of fun. So we're signing up uh, right outside here at the moment, just outside the Commerce School. Um, if you go out the doors on the left, um, you'll see us. We're set out there. Um, the guys are all ready to go. I have told them the big line's coming, so um, get on over. Before t-shirt size runs out. Yeah, get in early before your t-shirt size runs out. So. Um, because next week's going to be hectic and busy, so we're giving you guys a special offer now to come and sign up. Thank you very much, and thanks for the college fee time. Yeah, thank you. Right, that's us. Um, make sure you grab your pen drives on the way out. We'll have them at either door, and uh, we'll see you around.